Hello, my name is Sarah Lynch. I am a senior at Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York. I'm originally from New Jersey, and I'm majoring in communication with a concentration in journalism as well as public relations. I'm a senior in the honors program here at Marist. Um, so we complete a senior thesis, which is supposed to be focused on something that we are really passionate about and forms the culmination of our entire um, academic career at Marist and in the honors program. So my idea actually stemmed from a class that I took two years ago, um, and it's driven so many of my projects since then and really helped me solidify my commitment to journalism. It was a seminar on fake news, um, and I'd only known that term in the way that it's kind of thrown around in general, which you know includes clickbait social media posts, news with just factual errors, um, or even news that people just don't like. Um, and that was the extent of my familiarity. Um, but this class that I took really opened my eyes to where fake news as we know it stems from, um, the financial motivations involved, as well as the political ones, and the seriousness of what is at stake. You know, we learned about deep fakes, um, videos where voices of politicians um, and influential people can be dubbed to make it sound like they're saying things that they've never said. Um, and with technology growing so fast and a political environment that is just so divisive, I realize we're really heading toward this epistemic crisis of not knowing what is true and what is false and what we read. This really got to me because the news we read and the information we consume affects everything. It affects who we vote for, how we react to something like a global pandemic, how we understand issues like racism. The impacts are broad and they are vast. Um, that's what led me here. I started thinking about how to solve the fake news problem. Um, and there are so many solutions out there um, from various angles. Um, for example, fact checking is definitely a more immediate solution. That's a lot of what I did at my internship last summer. Um, but I'm personally more interested in the long-term solutions. So starving these fake news creators of clicks and thus hindering the impact of this misinformation. So the solution I became really interested in was education. And that's why I'm here today presenting the results of my work. I'm so excited to have the chance to talk to you all about this thesis. Um, first, I wanna say thank you to Dr. Kevin Lerner, whose class sparked my initial interest in this topic and who also advised this thesis project. And I also wanna give my thanks to Dr. Carolyn Matthews, the director of the honors program at Marist um, for her unwavering support. Um, so with this thesis, I set out on a mission um, on the surface level, which was to figure out how Dutchess County youth are encountering the news. Um, but really my long-term interests lie in fostering news consumers who are critical and can identify trustworthy and untrustworthy sources um, and more effectively participate as citizens. Um, and the findings of previous researchers really contributed to the foundation of my research topic and contextualize my own findings. For example, the Stanford History Education Group has tested students' news literacy on a number of occasions. Um, for instance, they um, surveyed 170 high school students who were shown a post alongside a questionable claim, and they found that less than 20% of students constructed responses that question the source of the post or the source of the photo. A really comprehensive survey from Common Sense Media found that 76% of children ages 10 to 18 who use social media also encounter news on those platforms. That said, just 44% said that they are able to distinguish fake news stories um, from real news stories. Um, and the interest in this topic is not singular um, to the United States. Uh, a study that I read conducted with Australian youth found that just one third believe that they can differentiate between real and fake news stories. Um, and in both the US and Australia, less than half of the children agreed that the news is important to them, really demonstrating a disconnect between young people and news media. So for my survey, um, I conducted um, this with students from two high schools in the Dutchess County area, John Jay High School in Hopewell Junction, as well as Roy C. Ketchum High School in Wappingers Falls. Um, Dutchess County is where Marist is located. So I was really interested in finding out what was happening just outside of the gates of my school. 
Um, and my survey ended up garnering 50 responses that were really insightful. Um, I conducted this using a Google form. Um, and prior to distribution, my survey questions and distribution methods were reviewed and approved by Marist College's Institutional Review Board. Um, the survey included questions of my own design, as well as questions borrowed from three previously published studies. In addition, I talked with industry experts from the News Literacy Project, um, which is one of the leaders um, in this field right now, and an international researcher working on the topic, which helped to place my findings and interest in a broader context. Um, so what did I find? Uh, I asked respondents about where they get their news most commonly. Um, social media and family members um, were above and beyond um, the top two. And they most commonly saw news headlines on YouTube, uh, which was also the most common social media platform used by the respondents. Um, other common ones included Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter in that order. Um, every respondent was familiar with the term fake news, um, but more than that, they've seen it in action. 92% said that they um, had personally recognized something as fake news um, while online. Um, so they were confident in that, but they were much less confident when it came to identifying whether or not they've personally shared any misinformation. Only 30% said that they did in the past six months. Another 30% said that they were unsure if they had. So there was some general confusion here about the news respondents are reading. Um, so what's the solution? As I mentioned, my focus is on education specifically and the long-term solutions for combating fake news. Um, from my findings and readings, news literacy, I believe, strongly fits the bill. Um, essentially, news literacy, I define it as teaching students how to read the news with a critical eye. Um, and the survey results definitely show a need for this. So only 24% of respondents give a lot of attention to the source of an article when they see news on social media. Overall, it seems young readers need to be more skeptical. Only 22% said that they would take effort to figure out if a story they saw online was trustworthy. Um, while there's definitely ample room for improvement, progress is already in motion. About 60% of respondents said that lessons in school have helped them identify trustworthy news stories. 38% of respondents said the news is discussed weekly in their classes. 36% said it's actually discussed most days. Um, and respondents said that these discussions primarily took place in English and history classes, but in some science classes as well. Um, but perhaps one of the most encouraging takeaways from this survey was this one. Um, more than half of respondents want more news discussions in the classroom. And this indicates to me um, an eagerness to learn, which could be very conducive um, to effective news literacy education. So the survey really revealed some interesting results, um, but I think my favorite part of this project was getting to go into the classrooms, um, virtually of course, due to the pandemic. But I had the opportunity um, to talk with students in five different classes at John Jay High School. And I presented them with seven examples of news stories and asked them to show with raised hands whether they thought the story was real news or fake news. Um, on only two of the seven examples, um, in the assessment, did all five classes of students confidently identify real or fake news? Um, and you know, I ended the presentation by giving students tips for news literacy, um, including examining the source uh, or potential bias or motive, and using fact-checking sites, sites like Snopes. I also started a class page for the students on Checkology, which is the e-learning platform from the News Literacy Project. And afterwards, I had an in-depth conversation with Maria Mahoney, um, the teacher for these classes. She was really passionate about this topic and has already given her students assignments that require getting more familiar with the news and world events. Um, and she said, it's all on us, it's all on educators to help students have these foundational skills. And she described this as a national crisis. But, you know, I am really encouraged to see Mahoney doing the work that she is doing. Um, I know that critical news reading from the results um, of my work needs to become a staple of education for students and a priority across the board when designing curriculums on a national scale. My conclusions for this work demonstrate, you know, a real lack of sufficient critical news reading skills from teams. 
but also glimmers of hope. Um, some students who guessed correctly in the real or fake portion of the presentation were able to say that they looked at the source, you know, and then inferred the bias. Um, so I, I loved getting to hear some of that. Um, and then, you know, these glimmers of hope are reflected nationally and abroad as well. An intermediate school in Brooklyn has become one of the first and only schools to adopt news literacy um, education into the English language arts curriculum. The news literacy project has really taken off in recent years, especially since 2016. Um, and Angelina Jolie actually announced that she's going to executive produce a show on BBC called BBC My World, aimed at helping children understand and think critically about news stories. Um, and so as I prepare to enter the workforce in May 2021, I look forward to finding ways to continue to explore my interests in news literacy and exploring solutions to the fake news problem. And I want to strive to become the kind of journalist who presents fair and, and accurate information and upholds the value of real news. Um, it has been such an honor to present my work today. Thank you so much to the Northeast Regional Honors Council. Um, if anyone has any more questions about my findings um, or wants to talk more about news literacy, my email is in the bottom right hand corner of my poster. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of the conference.